Welcome back to the Reverbian Podcast. My name is Jimmy. And I'm Sean. Yes. Every every time we do the hand <laughs> signal pointing that direction. Because <laughs> we aren't original. But yeah, welcome back to the Reverbian Podcast. Like I said, this week we will be focusing on the Oscars that happened this this week. Oh, what a surprise. Um, there's a lot to uh, talk about on that end especially the ending of the Oscars, which was uh, controversial online for multiple reasons. Some of them justified, some of them maybe in certain opinions not so justified, but we'll get to that later on. Um, I think we'll start it off with a bit of sport news. So uh, we've got, we've got, I've heard from the grapevine, there's some uh, news to do with Formula One, Sean. Always, always. Uh, two quite big ones actually this week. Um, the first one is that oh, we knew that they're gonna, well, they were discussing it, and that they kind of said they're going to happen. But in three races this season, there's going to be these sprint qualifying sessions. Uh, they're refusing to call them races, uh, because they don't want to take away from the main race on the Sunday, even though they are races. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> What will happen is the actual normal qualifying will be moved to Friday, um, and then the so-called sprint qualifying will be on Saturday, uh, which is a race. It's a race that's one third of the distance um, of the usual races. So, how many laps that usually is divided by three. There you go. Um, and these, so this sprint qualifying race will then decide the grid for Sunday's race. So, mm. qualifying Friday is the grid for the sprint race. Sprint race finishes, like finishing the standings, is then the grid for the actual race. Um, there's a bit. I'm not sure how to feel about it at the moment. Um, I think we better see it in practice. Uh, there's one thing I really don't like, which is that they're giving points for the top three finishers, um, which kind of just means that Hamilton and Verstappen will get even more points in the championship and move them further away from everyone else. And more than likely, Bottas will get some more points as well. There may be someone else sneaking in there, because obviously uh, at Imola, Bottas failed to uh, get on the grid, and it was Norris instead. So it could be... If those three drivers don't manage to get on uh, in the front three three for some reason in that race um, it would be very beneficial to another driver to pick up some extra points mm. um, but as a concept I think it will work a lot better or it will be more interesting because you'll hopefully you'll end up seeing more a mixed up grid in the actual race because there's more there's more time and uh, more ability for things to go wrong for drivers in a sprint race than in qualifying yeah. If something's wrong in a lap, they pull themselves in, they go out for another one. If it's a race, obviously there's the risk that someone could run into them, a mechanical failure could put them out of the race. So say if one of the front, like Hamilton or Verstappen, have a, an issue in that sprint race, like someone runs into the back of them or they just have a technical issue, they could then be starting at the back of the grid, which then means they have to work their way through through the field to try and win a race. So hopefully we'll see some more mixed up um, grids in the races uh, still expect has to be at the back unless they manage to finish a race and someone doesn't um, but it is expected that the British Grand Prix on, on the 16th to 18th of July will be the first one uh, for the new format followed by uh, Monza on the, on, from the 10th to the 12th of September um, Brazil have been expected to be the third but it's not confirmed um, other tracks are interested in doing it and also currently there's some doubts over whether the Brazil Grand Prix will actually take place because of they still have quite a high um, infection rate for COVID nineteen. Oh wow! But it looks wow. like so it looks like Britain and Italy are kind of secured for it, and yeah, we'll have to wait and find out what the third one will be. Um, but there won't be anything too soon. It'll be later on into the season uh, for when they do it, so they can get it in place. Uh, one interesting thing that I actually saw about it, because they agreed this a little while ago, um, so I, I um, agreed it 
originally with the teams back in February, and then they've basically been discussing it for the last two months to get it right. Um, and basically what was holding it up is that the teams were unhappy with Formula One's initial proposal for an extra payment of $75,000 per sprint race or qualifying race. Um, they're saying it would cost them a lot more money to run the cars for that. Um, so eventually they managed to agree on a counter proposal, which is an extra £1 million per qualifying race. So just a bit of a difference, <laughs> 75000 up to a million dollars, so they finally agree that, which is why there's now taken place. And obviously, you'll be a like a trial, I should imagine. They'll see how the three races go, discuss with teams, um, how they thought it went, and then we may see more of them in the following season. Whether they'll do a complete switch to okay, this is the new format for every race in the following season. If they like what happens this year, I don't know. Um, it might be that they slowly integrate it into more and more weekends that maybe next year we'll get half um, of each type and then eventually move over to the to all of them being this way. But obviously, it depends on how well these go, um, if the teams are capable of doing it. Um, because I imagine some teams like, again, Haas, who their drivers seem to like ruining their cars at the moment, that an extra race where a car could get ruined is going to be very expensive for them. Uh, but yeah, that was the first one. It'll be interesting to see uh, how they play out and hopefully it'll be a bit more interesting, shake things up. Uh, the second one is that once again, the Canadian Grand Prix has been cancelled for this year. It got cancelled last year because of COVID, same again this year. Um, but fans will love the fact that Turkey will be returning again for this year. Um, it stood in last year as a replacement uh, for one of the most exciting races of the season. And it'll be uh, here this year to replace Canada on the from the 11th to the 13th of June. Um, probably won't be as exciting as last year. I can't imagine the track being as slippy as it was because it's been resurfaced now. I'm assuming they've had more racing on there, which would have helped with the surface and it'll be more to a usual standard. But F1 fans love the Turkey uh, Grand Prix, the Turkey's track. So be nice to see it back again and again it might be a case that they could try and push themselves back into the uh, calendar for the future as well uh, to actually see it return properly but we'll never know have to wait and see we spoke about last week with Miami coming in that we already have 23 races in a year um, if we add Miami and it could be 24 depending on how they go with it who else then drops out for Turkey to come in so it might just be another one off uh, but we'll see and the final thing, while we're still talking about tracks, is that um, Japanese Grand Prix will remain at Suzuka until 2024. They signed a new deal uh, this week, so they will stay there. Um, great track, a uh, lot of great races there. Uh, no problem for that at all. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, There's not much to say about that, I just never agreed it. <laughs> have you got any other sport-related related news, except the one that uh, we I'm just... going to mention? Uh, then no. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> well, we'll get on to that one right now. Um, Mayweather versus Logan Paul. It's happening. It's been long rumoured. Um, it was something that no one thought would actually go ahead. But it is going ahead uh, on June the 6th. Uh, did did anyone expect this? It's going on at, oh, God, I forgot. The oh, Hard Rock no, Stadium. It's Hard Rock Stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just found it um i don't i don't really know what to say about this other than the fact that logan paul couldn't beat ksi so how is he gonna beat one of the best boxers in history <laughs> yeah there is that but actually <laughs> when when did they fight over a year ago imagine so if mayweather loses so we um, don't know how much training um, he's done no. since then um and obviously Not how enough. old is mayweather now because that does play a part in the day. Oh, but Mayweather May was so good. So he's 44 years old now. To be fair, he's not massively old, but still a bit. Um, I believe Logan's bigger than him. Yeah. I, th- I think... I'm assuming he's taller. I think Logan is taller. Ooh, um, we, we got the black screen, but I think we're okay. So... Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> um, yeah, Logan does have some... 
Oh. Yeah. Oh, are we good? Are we good? I don't know. I'm fine for my end, but... <laughs> You're okay. Okay, we're good. We're leaving okay. that all in because it was a mess. Okay. People... <laughs> Continue. But yeah, so Logan does have something going for him. Yeah. Um, obviously, he is bigger. Uh, he is stronger. He'll have a bigger reach. And the age on his side is Mayweather is older. But at the end of the day, the record that Mayweather has as a boxer, it's hard to see that someone who's not actually won a fight yet is going to overturn him. Um, yeah. uh, we have, have you seen, seen the poster? <laughs> have you seen the poster? Uh, Mayweather, no. Mayweather looks way bigger than him on the poster. And I'm not saying as in <laughs> size. I just mean they've made Mayweather the bigger person on the poster. Right. His, his head is almost double the size of Logan's. That's how much of a difference there is, I swear. <laughs> um, unless I'm just blind, it's crazy. But I believe it's it's just because Mayweather's uh, promotion is running it, so they want him to look the big. And he's the bigger star. Uh, let's not. Oh yeah. Let's not. <laughs> let's not say. Well, for the for the boxing world, he is. But to be fair to uh, Logan, he is going to bring in a massive audience who probably usually wouldn't watch your uh, normal boxing fights. They may turn into the bigger ones, but they are. He's going to bring in a lot of people to watch this fight who normally wouldn't wouldn't watch boxing because it's him he's not a draw like bad bunny was bad bunny versus <laughs> logan paul at wrestlemania <laughs> bad bunny's the one that brought in all the people see while we're saying this jokingly bad bunny actually did bits for wwe apparently he had the the highest merch sales from anyone um he brought Jeez. in the most viewers for a match i believe at wrestlemania it, there, there was crazy stuff and that's fair enough anyway uh, in yeah, my just, opinion, uh, was, Jake Paul should go. On. I was just going to say to back because we're talking about the size difference and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so Logan's six foot two, Mayweather's five foot eight, and uh, Logan has a reach of seventy six inches with seventy two for Mayweather. So he does have these like physical advantages, which if it was two professional boxers, um, who had who both had really good records, you would obviously then favor Logan because of the size and the reach, probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just that because of who it is he's against, if you just like there's no way you can do it. <laughs> yeah, like like I was about to say as well, I feel like this should have been a fight for Jake Paul because say say Logan does this and he comes very close, or if if he even wins, I, I, is Jake gonna say he's still the best uh, boxer in the world? Like he keeps going on about. Well, d- does is he then take on his boxer? own brother? Yeah, like where, where's this? Where's <laughs> is this, this what they're go? trying to set up for in the end to have a? I really want Paul. Logan Paul to batter Jake, not not Floyd, not Floyd. I want them both to have a, a, a boxing match and just. I, I'd love to see it like like we said before, like we said last week because uh, um, the Jake Paul uh, Ben Askren fight how that turned out like jake goes on about being an elite level boxer but hasn't actually boxed any boxers yeah at all. he's not for an actual boxer yeah so and he's also fought a ufc star with a very very fragile jaw well, um... <laughs> he fought a ufc star a former ufc star sh- sorry um who looked like he was, not... was in it for the money and that's it like he had so no he, pride or anything. He's a UFC that. star that wasn't <laughs> known for his striking. He was more of a grappler submission type of fighter. An MMA going, fight would have been so different, yeah. But that's the point. Yeah, but in a boxing ring, like it's so different. Yeah. And yeah, so it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see um, if Jake does go after any actual boxers next, or if he, he is to. waiting for this, waiting to see what happens in here, and maybe then challenge his own brother. He, he has I to can see that happening. I, I can see that as a next step. Either way, of a so if Logan wins, uh, Jake goes after him to go. I want to prove I'm better than you and a better boxer. And if he loses, to go, to still to go, I want to prove I'm better than you because I feel like they do have that what rivalry. But I really hope that Mayweather wins. <laughs> because... May- Mayweather can't lose this. He can't. It, this would be disastrous. And I, I don't even mind Logan. Like Logan's the better one. Logan's the okay one. Yeah, he's had a huge <laughs> redemption. To be fair, mm. to him. he's 
doing absolute bits at the moment. A great comeback from where he was a few years ago. But yeah, yeah. So especially when you think about it, Mayweather was able to not defend his record against Conor McGregor, who was this huge fighter and everything. Admittedly, the same situation of of an MMA fighter coming into a boxing ring and it's very different. But I feel like in that fight, people expected it to be quite close and it could yeah. have been. And at the end of the day, Mayweather schooled him and won fairly convincingly in the end. So hopefully it'll be the same here. <laughs> yeah. I think there'll be a lot of... Oh, I think Just imagine, though, if Logan wins, the amount of like actual boxing fans that would just be distraught. I'm calling it now. <laughs> I'm very early KO. First, first or second round for, for that's Mayweather. N- that's not really how Mayweather fights, though, is it? No, but I'm he, saying he doesn't normally go out of the block. I'm saying like if KSI can wobble <laughs> Logan Paul, like I don't think I think Logan would have started training now. But him being oh, on he would WrestleMania, have been for a long time. yeah. But um, him being on WrestleMania. I didn't look at him or and see, okay, this this guy looks big. He looks like not that he showed a lot, but you know where when you when you see someone, the presence of someone on the screen so close mm-hmm. to when they're supposed to be doing a boxing fight. I haven't seen anything physically from him that makes me go, okay, yeah, he can do this against possibly the greatest boxer of our generation at least. Yeah. Uh, well, he's not even our that- of our like boxing in our generation i should say but yeah Look, i'm slightly different to you i don't think it'll be an early knockout i think it'll be um that he'll just mayweather just play to his strength and he'll really test logan i think he'll just we- wear him down because mm-hmm. he has the experience over him where he'll be able to do it and just round after round just wear him down wear him down and then near the end he'll then go for it yeah Fair enough. I mean, I don't really care how it goes, just as long as Mayweather gets the win, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, my last little bit of sporting kind of related news isn't really sporting news, but Sean, what what do you say if I say an NXT official, a WWE NXT official, um, was involved in a story relating uh, to anti-mask child trafficking what there we go uh, <laughs> let, me, let, 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 let me let me just get it up but um there's an nxt referee slash official called drake uh Wirtz, who's been with the company for quite a long time and it came out um just after this news this was reported that uh, a few months ago, or just at the start of the year, he was suspended from NXT because of uh, stuff he put on, like Parler, um, which is like a social media for uh, very right wing social media, right. and um, like just just a lot of nonsense. But um, <laughs> he went on a it says here a seminal uh county board of commissioners meeting to talk about um the mask mandates in the area and he basically broke down crying saying that masks um are making it harder for uh like people to identify child traffickers and it's making it easier for child trafficking to occur and it basically came across as a man just not wanting to wear a mask and making up an excuse and crying about it. And he said, and I quote, make no mistake, if you don't end this nonsense and start trusting your constant uh, constituents to take personal responsibility by making their own informed decisions, you will not get re-elected while crying his heart out. Um, no one has sympathy for him. Apparently it's caused a big uproar backstage at NXT. And... I wouldn't be surprised if Drake, uh, Drake Wirtz um, says so long to WWE soon and they send him on his way and wish him luck for his future inve- uh, endeavours like they do. 
Yeah, it was. A, it's in, a crazy probably story. Probably in a um, nice uh, carrier bag or what's it, bin bag? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sending <laughs> <me> stuff. <laughs> uh, he won't be getting a nice phone call from Vince McMahon to uh, apologize about that either. <laughs> Um, which is something that happened. Uh, Vince McMahon did call up Mickey James and apologize to her um, over the whole ordeal. Uh, but I won't go into that anymore. If you want to learn more, there are multiple wrestling sites around there for that. But yeah, this was a crazy story. Uh, there's there's a lot more, but I don't want to read out the whole whole quote because it's just crazy. Uh, but if you want to go and see it, the the whole um, meeting is on um, YouTube. That you can go and watch. There's probably clips of him crying and everything. It's quite, it's quite something. I'll tell you that. But uh, yeah, that is all our sporting related news. So I think it's time for us to move on to uh, where I you have one go. game. I have a gaming one. Let's go gaming. I've got to mention you before. Which is just that this week we've had the um, announcement for May's uh, PlayStation Plus games. Mm-hmm. Um, so for PS4 users, uh, you'll be able to download Battlefield 5 and Stranded Deep. Um, and then if you also have a PS5, uh, you'll also have a Wreckfest, which is open to you to download. Uh, to download and they'll be available from the 4th of May through to the 31st of May. Yeah. And if anyone hasn't picked it up yet, Horizon Zero Dawn is still available until early next month. Uh, I believe it probably finishes on the 7th, uh, so pick it up. Awesome game if you haven't. Uh, my opinions on these games now, Battlefield 5, I am happy, is free because that's something we wanted to try out. So I really don't mind that, but it is very lackluster. I don't think this is a good month for um, the PlayStation uh, PlayStation Plus games. But then again, we've got the PlayStation Plus collection, so not that bothered. There's not really much I want to play that could be free at the moment, I think. So, yeah. Um, my... yeah if you're thinking of playing okay. that, you can pick them up for free. That's <laughs> uh, all we're here for. <laughs> fair enough. Um, but I have some PlayStation 5 news itself, which I'll get up right here. But uh, it has been revealed that as of March 31st, the PlayStation 5 sold 7.8 million units, which is uh, 0.2 million units more than the PS4 sold in the same time period. Um, Obviously, not the same time, but the same time from the release. So uh, the PS4 um, sold 7.6 million units in its uh, first fiscal year. And... uh, PS5 has sold 7.8 as of March 31st. Of course, we're late April now, but we don't have the numbers for that. Um, but it has also been stated that um, this has occurred despite all of these disastrous, you know, um, restock problems that have uh, occurred. And apparently that's not getting much better for at least a few months. <laughs> you still don't expect much in stock. Uh, If you're expecting one, uh, you might have to hold out a bit longer or get lucky like we did. But yeah, that is all my gaming news. I think it's, unless you've got any other sort of topics, it's time to move on to TV and movie. Um, I'll I'll get a little bit of of, uh, TV out of the way. Um, Titans, the DC show based off the uh, Titans comic book team, um was put on a bit of a hold because of covid so like they couldn't really film all that much but it has been revealed this week that um mad men star uh vincent carfizer i think his name carfizer will be playing scarecrow in the season scarecrow is a big batman villain uh in mainstream media you'll probably know him from either Batman Arkham Knight or the Batman Arkham series or um, the Batman Begins movie, which he was a major part in as the main villain. So, yeah, that's something that is uh, very interesting. I need to get an article up here because I forgot about this thing that I was going to talk about. I can talk while you're doing that. So go do that. (laughs) Yeah, we we saw some... uh, 
were they tweets, I believe, or was it on Instagram? Either way, yeah, tweets from um, House of the Dragon, which is the Game of Thrones prequel series about the Targaryens, um, that they started production uh, this week. Mm. Um, there was also, so they tweeted themselves, um, the actors, like, uh, basically got running through the scripts by the looks of it. Um, and then there was also uh, some actors, so Matt Smith and Emma Darcy were spotted on a beach in Cornwall, where they're believed to have started filming some of the scenes there. Mm. Um, so, as I said, it's the prequel series to Game of Thrones that people have been waiting for quite a long time for, to be honest. There was obviously talked about prequel series for many years. They find us either on this one. Um, you still got to wait longer for it because it's coming out in 2022. Um, but if you weren't already aware, um, it's featuring uh, people like so Eve Best, Paddy Considine, uh, Olivia Cook. Matt Smith, Emma Darcy, as of course, we've been pictured. Um, so quite a good cast going into it, and it looks like there's only going to be ten episodes for the first series. Pretty much so standard. Like Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. So fairly similar to the main bulk of Game of Thrones. Um, obviously, the later seasons they were cut down, but with longer episodes. Time for them um, to redeem so yeah. themselves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, they started production on that, but still got well about a year. Mm. Don't know exactly when in 20, 2022 it'll be coming out. But at least they'll actually started production like yeah. At least George R. R. Martin's doing something apart from not writing the final books. <laughs> not that we're mad about that at all. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um my my bit of news that I needed to look up um was a bit of well, some details arising from the John Wick TV series spin-off that was announced a very long time ago called The Continental. We didn't know much about it, but they've just revealed um like what it would follow. So it's not it's not going to be set during the film's run. Uh, they are making a fourth and a fifth film right now. Um but the spin-off series will focus on uh winston the character played by ian mcshane except he's probably not going to be playing the character because it's um a prequel about a young winston uh in the continental i assume by the name the continental so it'll be set about 40 years ago uh 40 years in the past so late 70s most likely new york um not much else is revealed but that was a pretty big thing to reveal that what it will be focused on there was also um when it was first announced that keanu reeves and ian mcshane would both be involved somehow so expect maybe in the first episode a bit of an opening with both of them but i don't think they'll have major roles yes uh, uh, if you're a john wick fan like i am uh, be excited some more some more john wick goodness in a bit of a different different way um but yeah we'll move on to some big news big potential news i should say which is that a new captain america movie is reportedly in the works um we have no confirmation kevin feige has not come out and uh said you know so we, we don't actually know but it will supposedly star um sam wilson who is the new uh captain america and that being anthony mackie officially captain officially captain officially america captain america everything uh to do with disney they have changed everything from captain america to to sam mm. big um, moves we talked about captain america and the winter soldier last week captain america yeah well, it, was, it is it was captain just, america just, and the winter soldier at the yeah. end yeah um falcon and the winter soldier but, sorry last week but it yeah. was just our luck as we discussed whether there'd be a film or not. <laughs> so I'm saying probably won't be a film. So we'd have heard about it. And what probably was it the next day, was it? We, yeah. <laughs> they then came out and said, oh, new film's in the works or could be in the works. Well, it's, so it it's again, also it stupid. It's also rumoured that the showrunner for the series, who is uh, Malcolm Spellman, uh, will be writing the script alongside uh, alongside Dallin uh, Musson, M- Musson, I think his name is um but that's obviously not confirmed either because we don't know if it's happening apparently (laughs) apparently anthony mackie found out about it while he was shopping like some um checkout clerk told him 
about uh, oh yeah you're starring in a movie and he was like am i <laughs> i didn't know about this <laughs> so uh, uh so we don't know if it's true or not but that was a pretty funny story so keep your eyes out if we see anything uh we'll go there we're probably either going to get a movie or a season two um apparently according to anthony mackie he also hasn't had talks about a season two yet but i wouldn't expect he necessarily would have you know he's probably signed on and has to go in when he when he needs to so yeah so that'd definitely be one or the other the, or he's the way they left it there's going to be something yeah <laughs> or, or he's had lying, that yeah. in the past haven't we, <laughs> yeah. that they denied that, that something's going on and then a few months later it's like oh yeah this, this is happening <laughs> I just couldn't say anything. Uh, uh, I have a couple more things. Do you have more, or should I just keep? Uh, no, going? knock yourself out. I will keep going. I'm just preparing myself <laughs> to butcher some names when we go through the Oscar winners. So, any fans of the Percy <laughs> Jackson movies will be happy to know that they are no longer continuing because there are no fans for the Percy Jackson movies. <laughs> uh, I, d- I didn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mind the first one, but the second one was atrocious. <laughs> um, and many fans of the books are are very happy to know that there's actually a series that's coming out instead, a TV series. Um, and casting is coming up on that. Rick Riordan, uh, or Rick Riordan, however you pronounce it, uh, the author of the series, um, announced that they are looking for actors of any ethnicity to uh, to play any character really um but mostly percy jackson is probably the one to, uh of note so yeah i i mean any fans out there probably happy to know that they're they're actually doing something with this uh much beloved series and uh creating a tv series that will hopefully surpass the movies because yeah i, I mean i'll sit here and say i as a kid I loved the first Percy Jackson movie, but the second was majorly disappointing. It was very, very much disappointing. Um, but I don't know if I loved the first movie because Alexandria, uh, Alexandra Daddario was in it. But <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a uh, it's yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, it was just the opening that was meant to be funny. I, there's not much else to say. But so um, I wasn't ready for it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Neither was I. I kind of just ad-libbed it. <laughs> <laughs> and the last bit of news before we get on to the Oscars. <laughs> this one's quite funny as well. But an 80-year-old review uh, resurfed it, uh, resurfaced uh, for Citizen Kane, which was the highest-rated movie on Rotten Tomatoes, or Rotten Tomatoes, however you want to pronounce it. Um, it had a hundred percent tomatoes. It it's tomatoes. tomatoes. It is tomatoes. Um, a hundred percent. It was on. It is now not on a hundred percent because of this review. No, no, <laughs> devastating. And do you know no. which two movies are ahead of it now? I don't think I want to know. <laughs> Paddington One and Paddington Two. Paddington Two is the highest rated movie in film history on Rotten Tomatoes. How? How? <laughs> it's funny. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't I haven't actually seen Paddington one and two. Apparently they're pretty good movies. I don't know if I don't know if they're the best movies <laughs> ever made. So but... I can't imagine they're hundred percent better than everything <laughs> you've ever seen. <laughs> I think I think Paddington uh... two is sitting at ninety seven percent right now. So this one one rotten review for Citizen Kane has taken it taken it down so much. <laughs> There's a lot of funny stories this week, or just dumb stories. You've got child trafficking with anti masks. You've got this one. <laughs> you just got a lot of dumb shit. But yeah, it was it was quite an interesting, funny story. But we're on to the Oscars, Sean. Are you excited? We are. Yes, because um, I get to butcher more names like I always do with these awards ceremonies when we go through them well sean you guess who's going through them it's you <laughs> i've got it ready it's fine I know, i'm preparing I know. uh but but I, I have one request like the oscars can you leave best actor till last please uh <laughs> i believe this article has been written in the order they were given out so they are in the correct order that you want okay um 
So we'll start off with Best Original Screenplay, which was won by Promising Young Woman. Mm. Uh, Best Adapted Screenplay was The Father. Uh, Best International Feature Film, Another Round. Best Actor in a Supporting Role was Daniel Kaluuya in Judas and the Black Messiah. Uh, Best Makeup and Hairstyling was Moraney's Black Bottom. Best Costume Design was also Moraney's Black Bottom. Uh, Best Director was Chloe Zhao in Nomadland for Nomadland. Uh, Best Sound was Sound of Metal. Best Live Action Short Film was Two Distant Strangers. Best Animated Short Film was If Anything Happens, I Love You. Best Animated Feature Film was Soul. Best Documentary Short was Colette. And Best Documentary, My Octopus Teacher. I would like to know what that's about. Um, Best best Visual Effects was Tenet. Uh, Best Actress in a Supporting Role was Yoon Yu Jung. I hope I said that right, in Minari. Um, best Production Design was Mank. Best Cinephotography was also Mank. Uh, best Film Editing was Sound of Metal. The Gene Herschel Humanitarian Award went to Tyler Perry. The Best Original Score was for Soul. The Best Original Song was Fight For You from Judas and the Black Messiah. Best Picture was Nomadland. Best Actress in a Leading Role was Frances McDormand in Nomadland. And best actor in a leading role, it was Chuck. No, it was it was Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> it was Anthony Hopkins who won for the father. Yeah. Um, the controversy. I have. I want to preface this by saying, I have seen neither Myrony's Black Bottom or the Father. Neither of our classic Oscars. I've never seen the films at Wit. <laughs> but from my understanding and from my knowledge of Anthony Hopkins. I wouldn't put him past put it past him that this is this was a brilliant performance and probably a deserved Oscar. Uh, many people online have said like the father was next level, like one of the best uh, roles he's ever acted, or at least one of the best acted roles in many years. So yeah, it's well deserved. But this caused a lot of controversy for two reasons. A. Chadwick Boseman did not win. This caused a massive uproar online because, I mean, obviously this was his only chance to win because he sadly passed away. Um, real shame, you know, just we, we've talked about Chadwick Boseman in the past, just horrible, horrible news. But um, the main controversy here should be that the Oscars moved Best Actor to last because they thought Chadwick Boseman was going to win. And something a lot, not a lot of people uh, know is that the producers don't actually know who's going to win each award. They just, so it's they a just guess. It's auditing firm, isn't it? Who yeah. uh, actually do handle everything. Yeah. Which is why we had the, a few years ago, there was the mistake of announcing the wrong winners. <laughs> <laughs> because it's this private auditing firm who deal with all of the winners and the envelopes and everything beforehand. Yeah. So I've, I have a lot of issues with some things people have been saying online where um uh, in the past i've even written stuff on this um while i was at uni and even before that i had investigated it but uh the oscars has been guilty of maybe a lack of a lack of cultures should we say there's not been enough there, there hasn't been enough black actors um nominated not a lot of asian actors it was a it was a very white affair and for the most part i can see why it was a very it was it was a very white dominated um like industry for a long time but now we've got to a point where it's not really acceptable anymore and that's fair but i've seen people online who have been slating this 80 something i think he's 83 or 84 year old man for 83 for putting for putting in one of the best uh acted like roles of his life you know uh not that i've seen it obviously like we said i haven't seen either of them so i can't judge but they've been going after this man like it's his fault that he performed so well during this year and i've seen people online saying you know uh, I know and a lot of people will probably say, oh, this is very nitpicky. You've only picked... These were, like, people with 5,000 likes, people with huge, huge, like, numbers on uh, Twitter 
saying stuff like this and it's quite disgusting you know like you can sit here and be like Chadwick Boseman deserves recognition and he does he does he really does he's done a lot for um not not just black actors but just black culture uh, overall like stuff with Black Panther um a few years back but a lot of people forget that Black Panther came out three to four years ago like it, it's not it's not a new thing you can't you can't be awarded for a role that came out three years ago it's about the, the 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 movies that come out this year and i've seen a lot of people say that he was really good in ma Rainey's black bottom but it wasn't his best performance it, it wasn't his best role uh, and a lot of people disagree and that's the point uh media and entertainment is subjective everything is subjective like that but i haven't seen that reaction to anthony hopkins other than people saying i don't know who this anthony hopkins guy is and I'm just sitting here like, all right, let's put this things you should know about. He played Hannibal <laughs> Lecter. Yeah, he's probably the most famous actor to play Hannibal Lecter outside of um, Mad Mickelson in Hannibal. Um, he, <laughs> he, he was Odin in the four movies. If you've watched Black Panther, you've probably seen the four movies as well. Um, he he was a major part in Westworld. I forgot who his character was, but he was awesome in Westworld. They're, those are just three roles in the countless amount of things he's done. So um, when you look through like everything he's done, it's just it's yeah. a huge list. Some like and some huge <laughs> <laughs> uh, films and this and TV shows. It's ridiculous. So I'm just sitting here like. It's not that you don't know who he is, it's just you're being ignorant on purpose. <laughs> you're doing this just to try and slander this poor man who's been awarded an award that the Oscars didn't even let him zoom into. Apparently he wanted to zoom in in case he won, but they were like, nah, nah. Because they yeah, were so they... set on, they were so set on Chadwick Boseman winning that they thought they didn't need to prepare for anything else. And look where also they demanded that he went to one of the hubs, wasn't it, to uh, do his speech if he wanted to. Yeah. Forgetting that this is an 83-year-old man during a global pandemic trying to make him move from his house. A bit of a stupid move. Well, apparently, <laughs> apparently the reason he was in Wales at the time as well, uh, I don't know if this is 100% true, but he was visiting his father's grave. So, yeah, add that one onto your right. list. Add that one onto your list. But... <laughs> But he has come out and like he's made a speech like dedicating uh, everything to Chadwick Boseman, saying how he'd gone too too soon and everything. He he's come out and mentioned him, mm. but, <laughs> but yet yeah, still people decide to say that it's an issue that he won over Chadwick is ridiculous. Yeah, this is very bad timing. But apparently Manchester United are losing two one to Roma, so. <laughs> Uh, no, no one cares. I um, care. I care. And apparently, Arsenal are losing two 0 to Villarreal. This is not about the Oscars they're doing. So it's fine. Can we're we we're giving topic, you li- we're giving you live up to date Europa League. Scores. Yeah, that that's useful. Live scores for people who are going to watch it when the game's no longer going on. They know what the fucking score was. <laughs> but I didn't know. Like... Wow, so rude. But anyway, Anthony Hopkins did win Best Actor. People can be upset about it all they like. I personally, out of all the things you could nitpick, I think you can only really nitpick the fact that the Oscars put Best Actor on last and then had no contingency because they thought he was going to win. They did try and capitalise him a little bit, but people lose sight on this. I've seen people like, oh, the Oscars didn't give uh, Viola Davis and uh, Chadwick Boseman their dues, but we both we all know that they're the best actors around and i've seen uh thousands upon thousands of people like this and i'm like you know what chadwick boseman and viola davis are two really good act- actors just that they're, they're they're incredible at what they do or well in chadwick's case obviously what he did and the legacy he secured but to put it like oh the oscars it no the oscars didn't do this that it's a voted upon thing it's and and it's not like they were wrong, you know, it's subjective. Just because your favourite didn't win doesn't mean your favourite isn't good. 
it, it, the fact that he got nominated shows is one of the best. You could even argue Riz Ahmed could have won ahead of Chadwick Boseman. If Chadwick Boseman hadn't have died, maybe that would have been the case. Well, but it wouldn't have been because I believe if it all worked out the same, Anthony Hopkins probably would have won. But I get people are upset about it, but you can't be mad at the result. You can be mad at the people, and a lot of people are. They're putting their, their hatred towards that, you know, the Oscars... They shouldn't have tried to capitalize on this. They shouldn't have moved Best Actor. It was the biggest mistake they've done in years. But hindsight's a beautiful thing, you know, looking back on it. Uh, and I disagree with a lot of the stuff that's been said online because a lot of it just try uh, is an attempt to devalue Anthony Hopkins. A lot of it's an attempt to call out racism where there really I, isn't in this case. You know, just because a black, a black actor hasn't won doesn't mean there's racism. The fact that he's been nominated and so highly acclaimed that he was up there, you know, that that should speak for itself. His legacy wasn't built on winning awards. His legacy was built on uh, creating this culture and helping so many young actors uh, like progress in the industry just like he, he was um, with Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington apparently... I think uh, many years ago, paid for his like education to go to university and stuff to to actually do this sort of stuff. So <laughs> it's it's a bit ridiculous. I, I won't go too much into it anymore because I don't want to don't want to seem like I'm saying he's un undeserving. He's not undeserving. He deserves all the recognition he 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 should get. But in this case. I have zero complaints and people shouldn't have any complaints at the fact that Anthony Hopkins won. The complaint should be at the people organizing the event for moving best actor to last because it's never been like that. And they did it clearly to, to yeah. uh, hop on, hop on the bandwagon. Uh, it, it might teach them though to, um, yeah, not just to never do that time. again. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, a, it's a learning lesson. It's a learning lesson. So yeah, I, I won't go any further on it, but yeah. I don't, I don't know if you have any, but I just went on a massive rant, to be honest. But uh, Not really. I just, I think we're getting, all we've been slowly getting towards this point um, where a mass majority of people, if somebody dies, expect them to win something for it. Like, if they did something oh, in the year that they died. I have to bring this up as well. I have to bring this up. Okay. Um, I saw someone argue about Heath Ledger relating to this. I think I oh, mentioned yeah. it to you. This. Yeah. I completely forgot about this. But um, when Heath Ledger died, he won Best Supporting Actor. He didn't win Best Actor. He won Best Supporting Actor. Let's, let's put this in. Um, for his role as the Joker. Many people, when you hear that, you're like, very well deserved, you know? He was... The, the Dark Knight's still one of the biggest movies now. Like, it, it's, it's such an influential movie that him winning, like... Even if he hadn't have died, he probably would have won it anyway. He was the the level during that time was you know up there, and <laughs> I genuinely saw someone say online that Heath Ledger didn't have the same struggles that Chadwick Boseman did because Chadwick had cancer and had to go through uh, like do these roles knowing that. But Heath Ledger killed himself, and that's why he got the award. But Chadwick, because he struggled, it still didn't even get the award. And I'm like, no, Ch Ch Chadwick is a very deserving actor, but Heath Ledger put in one of the performances of a lifetime. Like, he he's <laughs> he's known now for that performance. Still, it's one of the biggest villain performances in any movie ever, and the competition during that year wasn't that high i believe i'm pretty sure it was he was the front runner so it wasn't like something spectacular and then that guy was not having any of it and just was like yeah but if Heath Ledger had cancer he'd still get the award he, yeah he probably would have because it was it was his best role ever it was <laughs> it is that big so don't i think people need to get out of the habit of comparing dead actors you know, uh, I've seen people honestly say as well, like, oh, uh, everyone else gets an award where they, when they die, but Chadwick Boseman didn't. 
two actors i believe in oscar history have ever got a an award for um like best actor or supporting or whatever and one of them was heath ledger and i don't remember who the other one was um correct me if i'm wrong as well if if anyone knows that but i'm like, clearly trying to find out <laughs> but like there there's not been many so to say that there there have been uh people were like oh but um chadwick boseman should have got a, a special award as well he should have been given a special award after the show and i was like what about everyone else who's died who was in the memorandum at the end what about all, all of these other big names that died you know what why do they deserve less i get chadwick boseman was someone you loved and it's someone a lot of people loved and it's such a miss but to say that he deserves a special award above all these other people sean connery died sean connery's massive sean connery is such a huge name you know, one of the one of the most well-known bond actors ever he was i'm pretty sure he was the first james bond was he not i need to look this up now uh sean connery um why do, there's more than you think actually um, who but are they singular had, actors uh, uh, I mean, like, did mean? they win Best oh, Actor um, or Best Supporting Actor, or did they win for, like, Best Movie or stuff like that? Cause... Okay, so we had in... Uh, well, it's in 1976, Peter Finch. Peter Finch um, is the one For best, best Actor. Mm-hmm. Um, by the looks of it, yeah, all the others were part of... It was, like, the Best Picture or something like that, where they one as part of that so like yeah, like i was saying there's two, only two two for single singularly acting singular acting roles which yeah. is heath ledger and whoever i just said uh, peter, peter finch, finch. <laughs> yeah those were the two uh so i was right but like yeah sean connery was the first bond i, I was indeed correct so like how can you say sean connery doesn't deserve this award but then say Chadwick Boseman does. It shouldn't oh, probably be probably because Sean Connery probably didn't have a film this year. No, no, year. no. But the <laughs> but the point is they're saying that uh, Chadwick Boseman will never win an Oscar again because of this. So oh, yeah. So he should get an award now. And I'm like, if he won many awards, do you think he really cared about winning awards? Do you think? Do you think that was his sole reason? For doing it he probably did it for a lot of other reasons than to win a, an oscar you know it's it's a great thing it's it's a huge thing but do you really think he cared enough to be given a special award because he passed away no he would have wanted to he wanted wanted to have earned that award while he was alive you know and i i don't like the special treatment i get it i understand and i understand people are hurt but the people have to understand the Chadwick Boseman wasn't the only actor to have sadly passed away this year, and um, while while he does deserve the recognition, I'm not I'm not all that convinced that he had to have won the Oscar. Like it's some big outrage. If he wasn't the best performance of the year, he wasn't the best performance of the year. That's the point. And it's not like he wasn't involved in any. Technically, he's won the Oscars because. Um, uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom won multiple awards. He was part of that cast. It's it's a whole cast thing. It's not like just a, a depending on what the award is. I think I think it won best costume design, which I think is just for the costume designer. But I think it won something else as well, which would have been most likely a whole cast thing. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But so the point there were is... a couple I can quickly look back through. But... Yeah. But, but it's just yeah i i don't want i don't want to go any further really but i i need to bring I mean, up the heath ledger thing it was makeup and hair styling and costume design oh maybe maybe they didn't win the cat maybe, so... <laughs> maybe i am correct. yeah maybe i am incorrect on that one but at the same time it doesn't really matter like it, it's just it a... comes back to what we're saying is that people shouldn't get awards because they've died which seems to be mm. um like what people think should happen it come, it's the same, or it's a similar thing that people seem to um, say, like, an actor should win an award because of what they put themselves through for the role. So, obviously, you have um, a lot of actors who either method act or will go through huge body transformations for a role, and people go, oh, well, they should win this award because 
they put on so much weight or they lost so much weight for this role to make it look authentic or they spent so much time doing this to make it more authentic. And it's like, well, no, like just because they chose to put themselves through that for the role doesn't mean they should deserve to win. And then it, it no longer comes down to acting ability. It comes down to who's willing to put their body through the most trauma for a role. I do. I do think it's a mix of both. Like if you do go through, like he did struggle with cancer while filming. This is not, oh, not yes. a surprise. but at the same time, it's more, the fact that like people have admitted it's not even his best role it wasn't even his best performance it was a good performance no one's no one's taking that away from him no one will ever take that away from him but people are saying anthony hopkins performance was the best performance but maybe one of the best performances of his career and that's a very long career <laughs> you know he's one of the most well-known actors in the world like throughout the ages <laughs> you know i don't want to make him sound old but <laughs> yeah like and at the end of the day the winners of awards like this it's all subjective like there is no right or wrong mm-hmm. answer people will have differing opinions on who they think should have won for the films that they've seen and how they interpret films so because just because you think that one person should have won and they didn't doesn't mean that they didn't per- perform really well or it wasn't a great role it's just that this select group of people who voted on it chose went a different direction obviously yeah. not everyone is consulted it, it not everyone in the world is consulted on the winner of these awards because it, it would be impossible to do so it's just the opinion of this select group of people who decide on it so it's really not worth attacking people over it mm. um attacking the actors over it or whatever it's just you thought you have a different opinion get on with it <laughs> i do want to establish as well i don't want to come out and attack loads of people I, I don't want this to sound like an attack but it's more of an awareness thing you know uh, there are a lot of racial issues in the world we've experienced not experienced that but we've talked about that in the past with different forms um football was one we focused on very early on uh, where we talked about the stuff with uh, raheem sterling and Jaden sancho and stuff like that uh you know, it's something we're aware of in this world and something that sometimes you need to bring awareness to. Well, all the time you need to bring awareness to. But I think this is a bit of a case of calling racism where there isn't racism just because you think the wrong actor won. And in a way, that's a form of racism of itself because you're doing it because Anthony Hopkins is a white man <laughs> you know a lot of people are doing it because of that and it's a shame uh you know like uh, fair enough whatever well, I've said my piece I think we've said enough I've said my piece <laughs> we're moving on um this is coming to an hour which is what I was trying to aim for because I rambled a lot here um but yeah, we we will be back next week. I don't know what we'll be doing, but we will be back. Um, is there anything big happening next week? Not that I know. <laughs> <laughs> we may struggle struggle. Hopefully, for the main something will happen in the week in this next week that will give us yeah. something to talk about. But uh, we will see you soon. Follow us on Twitter and subscribe on YouTube. Give us a like, comment, all the normal things. Uh, follow Sean's YouTube channel, uh, Elder on YouTube. Uh, it's Elder on YouTube. You can YT. put a link in the description yeah. if you want. I might yeah, do. Put, just, just, put just, just remind just put me. Link. Just remind me, and I will. Um, but yeah, he he may get some new videos up soon. Are you, are you planning on any? Oh, fucking Am I giving you pressure? Yeah. Oh, okay. snap! Snap comes up tomorrow. I can do something with that. That's cool. Yeah, new Pokemon. <laughs> That's something. Cards, no. Before we end, fucking ages. Snap before we end, tomorrow. new Pokemon Snap comes out on the day of this podcast. Pick it up if you're a big fan. That's all we have to say. Um, We'll see you next week.